can we use the tools of public speaking and all the ideas of presence around us to speak the Word of God more effectively? That's what we'll talk about today. A wise man speaks because he has something to say. A fool speaks because he has to say something. Plato. Today we're going to continue the book, Don't Drop the Mic, The Power of Your Words Can Change the World, by T.D. Jakes and Dr. Frank Thomas. We talked in the last podcast about public speaking and how you can use the power of your speech to change the world. And so now we're going to continue that conversation with this book because he really wants that from us. You could tell he is desperate for people to speak and do it effectively. And he wants to make you feel comfortable doing that. That's why it's a good book with how to get your message out there, whatever it is your message is. He says in the end with our faith, it's important to have a relationship with God, but we have to have a relationship with other people. By building that connection and having people listen to us, it's going to create trust and a bond with us. It's partially about charisma. It's partially about connecting with the audience. He says that Jesus did that all the time. You can tell it too. It's always interesting to me when you listen to Jesus because he'll talk this way to this group of people and that way to that group of people. And maybe he'll even change how he talks to the same group of people. But he had that way of seeing through exactly what it is people were thinking, what they were trying to get from him. Was it a trick or were they asking an honest question? And so by having that connection, that's important. He also says that chemistry. And he admits too that chemistry is a really weird term when you build chemistry with people. It's part charm, it's part connection, but it's something more than that. And if you can build that chemistry with people, with your audience, with the people that you're talking to, you'll grab them and your message and your delivery and the things that you're saying will get with people. He says, resonate better with groups of people. He says in the past he had groups that he was supposed to talk to and it lacked chemistry and he knew it. And it's very frustrating. And I've been there before where you're speaking to a group of people and it's just not clicking. So he says it's good that you test the waters a little bit with people and see where it goes. I tend to joke a little bit when I do presentations, loosen the audience up, make people feel good. And there are times where that did not go over well. The people in the room were not interested not willing to have a good time that day or didn't want to listen to a speech that was good time. And immediately jokes went out the door and I spoke more professionally. And it was funny because I just turned it around in a couple of sentences in my presentation. The whole theory of what I was going to talk about and how I was going to talk about it went out the door because it just wasn't going anywhere. So trying to listen to your audience and build that rapport and see what is connecting with them and what is not it makes all the difference in the world. I joked about a time where I was teaching forms building. My software that I worked with had forms in it. And I decided to do something a little bit different. Instead of going through the training manual, this group looked tired and it looked like they were getting a little bit bored with the presentation. So I said, let's just build a form together. What type of form should we build? And the suggestion that came from the group was outrageous, but we went with it and we built this absolutely ridiculous form and we laughed our way through the whole presentation. And I don't think anyone in that room will ever forget it again. So you can have those chemistry moments when you react to how people are reacting to you. He says too, that you got to deliver on your brand. You know, people will know what you're about. People know when I usually speak at conferences, they know what I'm about. Mostly I speak to the similar group of people every year and they know me and they know what kind of presentations I do. And so I can't go away from that brand. I remember one time I did a presentation with someone. They were pretty straight laced and their style was entirely different. And I could tell she was just getting annoyed with me because I have tried very hard to relate to people, to speak at their language, and she wanted to be professional. And I think she felt I was wrecking this professionalism. But I hate to say it, but when I speak with people and I speak at conferences, I connect with people. And so I knew how I connect with people. I know it grabs people. I measure my speeches very carefully on 
how I think it's going to land. And we had a very big difference there. But you have to stick to what your brand is. I think that's what I was doing. And then the last part is you have to be authentic. When you feel like people are lying to you, not telling you the truth, making up a persona, I've seen people speak on a persona that they're not. And it doesn't go very well. It doesn't fit with people. So above everything else, where you're trying to be charming or have some chemistry with people, in the end, you have to be authentic. It says that we have to be agile, like I said, talking about changing and testing the waters, and that you have to pay attention to feedback. Like I said, some feedback is going to be on the spot. You're going to look people in the eye. They're frowning at you. They're not getting your message. You can see it. If you get over the fear, you can get some sort of semblance of calm with yourself. You start being able to read the audience as you go, and you can tell when things are just not going very well. And that's where he says, quote, but ultimately, listen to your instincts as you learn from your experiences. So when you see things that work and don't work, keep learning and keep doing better. He says it's a little bit, and he'll use this analogy throughout the entire book, about cooking. And if you're putting something in the recipe, like maybe you put too much pepper, but you like a lot of pepper in your recipes but you found out that your audience does not enjoy pepper, try reducing the pepper, even though it's a little bit of what your brand is. It's not the proper place. And I talked about in a podcast about humor at work in Start With Small Steps podcast. And having humor at work is really important, but you have to have the right kind of humor. And if you find you're not landing, if it's not working or humor was inappropriate at that moment, that's where you have to take what your interior instincts are, and learn from your feedback. He says, quote, if you want your audience to be comfortable with you, you will have to be comfortable with you. And that's the big part about speaking. If you're self-conscious, if you're worried about yourself, it's not going to work very well. You're not going to feel comfortable to divert your speech a little bit because it's a little bit of a different group or a little bit different etiquette that's there. But once you gain comfort with yourself, you'll be agile in your public speaking, in telling your message to other people. And he says that speaking is a creative experience. That's where you're going to gel your speech, but you're also going to bend it a little this way, bend it a little bit that way because of your audience. And so you have to be prepared that you might have to be agile in how you present how you communicate, and the things that you say whenever you're giving a certain type of presentation. I know, too, if you present with other people, it's a whole wild card. So you're going to go in and think, I'm going to present X, and he's going to present Y, and then we're going to talk about Z. But you know what? That other person, they may not talk about the thing that they were supposed to talk about, or maybe they're going to somehow talk about the thing you were going to talk about. And so being agile and listening and taking that feedback is an important step. And he says that if you find yourself not gelling, you got kind of an arret, you can't seem to get over the creativity, you might have to talk to some people with different points of view so that you can see what it is you're trying to say and maybe find a better way to say it. So use the people around you. He says that even like uh, other members of your church, prayer groups and other study groups to help you pull apart the pieces of the things that you're going to try to say and put them back together with their help. And that'll make you be a better speaker, whatever it is you're trying to do. It's also important that we have a lot of preparation. I've seen that sometimes people are not bad speakers, but they're very unprepared. They don't speak the thing that they were supposed to do. They don't practice. So they get very chunky and clunky and They don't say things in a very smooth way, or even worse, they were supposed to talk for 45 minutes and instead they ended up talking for an hour, or they ended up talking for 20 minutes because they talked way too fast because they got nervous. So preparing, working your way up, practicing your speech, timing your speech so it ends up being the right amount of time is going to help you in the very end. says that we also have to try to remove distractions or he what he calls unintentional quirks. If you're doing something that is maybe a nervous habit and it's moving people away from paying attention to your speech. It might hurt people actually focusing on the things you want them to focus. I notice that there's a person all the time that I hear speak every once in a while 
and she gets nervous and she goes, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I, I really screwed this up. Uh, let me let me start over again. And it jumps people out of her public speech. And she can't do that. You know, you can't just stop a public speech and go back and do it again better the next time. So try to realize, again, the situations are going to be fluid. You are going to make mistakes because people do. But try not to call attention out in such a way that it jerks people out of your speech. You've done that, like where you watched a movie and you were really into this movie. And then something weird happens and it just pulls you out of that imagination session that you're having. And now you realize, oh, yeah, I'm in a movie theater and I'm watching this movie. Try to avoid those types of things. The more smooth and not quirky or distracting that you can be, the more you'll keep people involved in your message. You're trying to build bridges and you're trying to build resonance with people and and you're trying to build community and chemistry with people and try not to break them out once you've had that moment where you were grabbing people. He says, whenever we speak, particularly God's word, he says, quote, I try to be a conduit, a facilitator, a bridge between the truth of scripture and the needs of my congregation. You are there to fulfill a purpose. And by taking these tools and these points, you can do that very well. Now, this sounds really interesting in this last part because you're trying to practice. You're trying to make sure that you go on time. You're trying to build rapport. You're trying not to be distracting. But he says the very last part of it is you have to let yourself go, which seems on the face of it is contrary to what we were just hearing. Hone your message. Do this. Focus on this and focus on that. But at this point, you have to let go, he says. You have to just speak. Give your message. Make it sure that what you're saying is uplifting, connecting with people. But be yourself. If you're shy and reserved, he says it's time to give that up. Just go for it. And I agree. I've seen people who are shy and reserved and they get very quiet. And well, I just wanted to share my testimony. And you know what? You're trying to build that rapport. I know that people are nervous, but at this point you have nothing to lose, but then just going for it and say what you're going to say and be bold and loud and excited about it. And I understand what he means. Make sure that you're giving it everything you got. You're putting your energy in it. I always felt as a corporate trainer that my energy is what energizes other people. The trainer themselves is the battery. And if I walked into a training room, I'm not much of a morning person. So you send me off to the East Coast. I remember I always got these trips right as daylight savings time were ending. So I'd go out and fly to a customer. I'd have to be on site at eight o'clock, which is really seven o'clock in my time. But now it's daylight savings time. So it's really six o'clock. And I had gotten no sleep because of the flight and the travels and everything else like that. Then I get into the training room and now I have to train people. If I go in there and I'm tired and not energetic, the whole room is going to get crushed. The training is going to be boring. They're not going to learn what it is I'm trying to do. And however many ways, and I've learned a lot of techniques in the past of energizing myself, everything from way too much caffeine to telling jokes to different types of things that I try to do to get people with me. You have to go for it. You are the energy source for that entire room. So make sure that whatever it is you're going to speak about, you're really going for it and you're saying your voice. And he says that you can use your whole body in this message. You're going to use your physicality, whether you're thin or overweight or tall or short, or if you have a broken leg, use everything that you got. And that you will start to learn, he says, to trust your voice and make sure that your body works in tandem. It's interesting. When I was in Toastmasters, we would rank people on how they did and what they talked about. And sometimes people would not use their arms or they would use the wrong arm signals for the speech that they were giving. So they might have said, and then I walked over to the right and they would use their left hand to point. Wow, that's really weird because you'd think, Your body would naturally, when you said the right, swing your arm towards the right. Sometimes people just don't connect or they don't think of it like that. But he says that we should try to be 
cohesive message using our entire body. All right. So next week, we're going to talk about the miracles and the need in the speeches we make and how it's important that we reach people at where they're at. So my challenge to you is, can you take a small speech? Again, maybe your testimony, a little elevator speech about yourself and practice it. Get good at an important five-minute speech. Like I said, maybe it's going to be how you came to Christ. Maybe it's going to be about what is important about the ministry you do or what you think about your church and how you would like to invite this person to come to your church. But get down a five-minute speech. Time it. Practice it. Make sure your body is following what you're going to say and see if you can get that perfect five-minute speech together. All right, everyone, thanks so much. I appreciate you listening to the podcast. Please remember that you can always email me. I'm happy to pray for you, answer questions, or talk about a topic that you're interested in hearing about. Or if you'd like me to come and talk to your Bible study, happy to do that too. You can reach me at jill at smallstepswithgod.com. And remember, our steps towards reaching out and grabbing the people in our lives so they understand what we're trying to say starts with small steps. <laughs>